In this video, we're talking about how to find the present value of a single deposit when the interest on that deposit is being compounded continuously. So let's talk about those three things for a second. Present value means the value of an investment today as opposed to future value, which is the value of an investment in the future. Single deposit means that I'm depositing a certain amount of money just one time and then letting it grow without adding anything to it or taking away from it. That's different than maybe an income stream problem where we're asked to look at the present or future value of an account where we add money to the account every single month or every single year. We make continuous deposits over and over. That's going to change the value of the account, obviously. And compounded continuously means that the interest we're earning on that account is being constantly compounded. And whenever you see compounded continuously or continuously compounded interest, that means that our formulas, the formulas we're going to be using, are going to include this exponential number E. When you see something like compounded N times per year, compounded annually, compounded quarterly, compounded six times per year, or whatever, then the formulas that you use are different. They don't involve the exponential number E. But compounded continuously means we're going to be using these formulas. And in this particular video, we're looking at what's the present value of a single deposit compounded continuously. So we referred to these formulas, but let's look at them. This first one is a future value formula, even though we're looking here at present value. It says future value is equal to present value times E, the exponential number, raised to the RT. So in this case, R is the rate. It's the annual percentage rate specifically. And T is time in years. Notice that R and T have matching units. They're both annually or in terms of years. If you're given one of these values and it's not in annual units, for example, maybe you're told that T is in terms of months, you want to convert that into years. Now, we also have here a present value formula. So present value is equal to future value divided by e to the rt. Well, notice here that this present value formula just comes directly from the future value formula. All we did to the future value formula was divide both sides by e to the rt in order to solve for pv and get it by itself. So you don't have to remember both of these formulas. You can just remember one of them and then end up solving for whichever variable it is that you need to find. So let's go through an example where we find present value. We'll go ahead and use this present value formula specifically, but of course we could use the future value formula as well, and we would just end up solving for PV. So here's our problem. If we want to have $15,000 in an account in four years from now, so we're standing here today, and in four years from now, we want $15,000 in an account that we own. That account between now and then is going to earn 8% interest compounded continuously. So if that's the case, then how much do we need to have in the account today in order to get to our $15,000 goal? Well, with problems like these, the first thing you want to do is write down everything that we know. So we know the future value of the account is going to be $15,000 because that is what we want to have in the future. That's our future amount. We also know that T is going to be four years because we were told that we wanted to have $15,000 in four years time. We know that the account earns 8% interest, so our interest rate, R, is going to be 8%, and we need to be able to convert that percentage rate to a decimal. Well, 8% as a decimal is 0 0.08. Be careful not to use 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is 80%. 0 0.08 is 8%. So R, the interest rate, is going to be 0 0.08. And then we're compounding continuously. That just confirms that we need to use these formulas that include the exponential number E. Of course, what we're trying to solve for is present value. How much do we need in the account today? So if we plug what we have into our present value formula, we have future value, 15,000, divided by e to the rt. So the e always stays. And then we raise that to the decimal number that represents our rate times the time of four years. 
And we could just plug this whole thing into our calculator, or we could simplify the denominator first and say 15,000 divided by e to the 0 0.08 times 4 is 0 0.32. We could do that intermediary step, but the value we're going to get here is about 10, 8, 92, 20. And remember, since this answer is in terms of dollars, we can round to the nearest cents. So you want to round to the hundredths place since we've got this in terms of dollars and cents. So what this tells us is that we need to have $10,892.20 in the account today if we want to have $15,000 in that same account in four years. And that's based on the fact that interest is compounded continuously and we're earning 8%. If we were earning a different percentage rate, then this number would change. Or if the time was different, we had more time or less time to get to that $15,000, this number would be different. But at 8% compounded continuously with four years, in order to get to $15,000, we need 10,892.20 today. And just to prove what we were talking about earlier, remember you could still plug this into the future value formula if you don't want to remember the present value formula. We would just take the future value, 15,000, that would be equal to the present value times e to the rt, which would be 0 0.08 times 4. We would get 15,000 equals present value e to the 0 0.32. We could divide both sides by e to the 0 0.32, and we'd get 15,000 over e to the 0 0.32 equals present value and do that on our calculator and we would get the same value present value is equal to 10 892 20. so with either formula you can solve for the variable that you need and that'll include the other variables as well not only can you solve for future value or present value but if the value you're missing is the rate or the value you're missing is the time you can plug in for all of the other variables and then just solve for the value that you're missing.